Now, speaking of team captaincies, let's talk about a player who would not be my pick to be the captain of the Edmonton Oilers. And he definitely would not be my cap my choice to be the captain of any team in the NHL if I had my way. And that is Mark Shifley. I don't talk about teams other than the Oilers very often on this podcast, but what I do is because there's actually some there's there's a very important kind of lesson that you can attach to it. And this is actually something that we had talked about previously on this podcast, and that was Mark Shifley and some of his antics in Winnipeg. Previously I talked about some of his antics towards Patrick Line. You know, how he and Blake Wheeler are at very least rumored, I think credibly rumored, to have basically kind of gotten together to, to chase Patrick Laine out of, uh, out of Winnipeg. Uh, which is a damn stupid thing to do. It doesn't really seem like Patrick Laine is any happier in Columbus under uh, John Tortorella. Uh, but then again, there's a lot of players that wouldn't be very happy playing for John Tortorella. But that's, that's neither or the case. It's just these players do have a history of being involved in, you know, let's say some shady behavior you know, as a player. And this week, this past week, Mark Shifley has actually managed to add to his, uh, <laughs> add to his resume in terms of shady behavior. So in a recent game, I can't actually remember off the top of my be- top of my head. I believe it was Toronto. They were playing uh, the Winnipeg Jets were playing Toronto. There was a uh, there was there was a portion of four on four play, and Mark Shifley not only went out and kind of played lazily four on four, but he actually skipped over multiple cha- multiple opportunities to go take a change, let another player come out onto the ice. And he's out there just kind of lollygagging around, and he's, you know, he's gliding, and he's coasting, and he's not playing very hard, and, you know, lo and behold, what happens? You know, John Tavares winds up scoring on the, on the play. So Paul Maurice obviously was not very happy about that. I don't think there's a coach anywhere in the NHL that's going to be very happy about that, so he did what any coach should do in that situation. He benched Mark Shifley. And the very next thing that Mark Shipley does is he goes out in the media and he starts talking about how it's like, oh, well, you know, uh, the coach did this, coach did that. I don't, do, I don't agree with the coach. I don't think that there is actually... I, actually, that's not true. There are definitely ways that Mark Shifley could have handled that worse. But there are not very many of them. I mean, let's just come out and say it. You know, this is not the behavior of a player who was actually a team player. Uh, this is the behavior of a pretty selfish player, a guy who's really only interested in himself. I mean, playing like that in a four-on-four situation, skipping over multiple opportunities to change to let somebody out onto the ice who might actually have played that situation an awful lot harder than what Mark's Mike, uh, what Mark Shifley actually played. You know, that in and of itself is extremely selfish. But of all the different places where you might address a disagreement with a coach, in the media is the absolute last one. Especially if you're a player like Mike Shifley, who is considered to be a star player, is considered to be a senior player at this point, you know, a veteran player on the Jets roster. You know, he's part of their leadership core. What kind of example is Mark Shifley setting for the uh, for the remainder of the team? It's going to be very difficult. You know, for our coach who actually has a Stanley Cup, you know, he's got a Stanley Cup on his resume. Mark Shifley does not. You know, Mark Shifley should be an awful lot more interested in learning what he can learn from this experience. And Paul Maurice did absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, he did the exact right thing. You know, you never see, uh, you, you absolutely never see a shift like that out of Connor McDavid. But if you did see one like that out of uh, Connor McDavid, I would expect Tippett to uh, do the exact same thing and bench him. Because your team needs to understand that everybody is obligated to produce, everybody is obligated to work hard. Anyone can be benched if they don't. Everyone can be benched if they don't. And if you don't like a coach's decision in a situation like that, in the media is absolutely not the place to be addressing that. You go and you do that in private. You go and you do that behind closed doors. You know, literally, you and your coach, maybe an assistant coach, maybe somebody else from the team present, but definitely not in the media. Yeah, especially not if, <laughs> you know, I mean, quite frankly, it's, it's impossible to look away from this one particular detail, 
Mark Shifley was 10,000% in the wrong. So a few months ago, I did a podcast segment where I compared the situation that the Winnipeg Jets are in right now, particularly after the Line A trade, to the situation that the Ottawa Senators were in when they traded uh, when they had to trade Eric Carlson. And to me, it looks like a very similar situation. Now, if anybody wanted to try to convince me any differently, Mark Shifley has done you a disservice. There were a lot of Jets fans who really did not appreciate something, but uh, somebody coming out and saying something like that. And if you happen to be one of these fans, I have to tell you, Mark Shifley has not done you, has not done you a good service here. He has done you a disservice. He is doing a disservice to your team. I don't know what it's going to take for somebody to straighten Mark Shifley out and make him into a proper team player. But his ego is obviously completely out of control. And his ego is what's driving his play. And that's a problem. And it's going to remain a problem until somebody in the Jets organization finally finds the guts to stand up to Mark Shifley and tell him, okay, you either ship up or we're going to ship you out. Like, you're not untouchable. We can trade you. We can get you right out of here. And in all honesty, after a performance like that, I mean, after two performances like that, I have a hard time imagining why a lot of Jets fans would even be sorry to see him go.